yeah. Nice. nice. Hey guys, Kiniku Ninja here. I'm here about to make my own climbing wall in my back garden using my existing equipment, making some slight alterations. And here is the plan that I've made using not quite to sale lolly sticks. But here's the plan. So what I've got already is these three posts up in the garden. Two, three, that's currently where my salmon ladder is. And uh, this is the thing I use. But what I'm going to use them for, by taking down some of the existing things, I'm going to turn this into like a, like a cave section here so we can climb up. And then there's a flat section of wall. And then upside down, a steeper overhang to the end. And then hopefully it won't fall. There's my crash mat for good measure. And then over here we've got just another diagonal climb. So, I'm hoping. I'm going <laughs> I'm hoping it all works out. Anyway, here's to a quick montage of things coming together. So as you might imagine, this wall was in the works on paper for a long, long time before I made any decisions. Pause the video at any point if you want to see these in more detail. Between myself and my two best friends, we drew, we chatted, we redrew, we made models, we redesigned, we did everything we could do to make sure we could get the most for our money and get the most out of the available space without making too much work for ourselves or increasing the expenditure. I don't think you should view this video as a tutorial because I'm building on top of what I already had and 99% of people don't have the Ninja Warrior setup in their back garden that I had. But you could look to this video in order to gather ideas for your own home wall. Now, I'm not the best with tools but fortunately my friends know what they're doing so things started coming together very quickly. We used those treated decking planks to brace the existing fence posts together and then the 18mm exterior plywood sheeting made the whole rig really solid. My friends were super creative when it came to making volumes and different shaped faces for the wall and I'm not even sure how they did it if I'm honest. Right, let's talk budget. I didn't really set a number before I started building the wall and putting things together but I knew it would get very expensive very quickly. Uh, the current standing I've spent £74 on fixings, £300 on wood, £8 on paint and some more money on holes which I'll come back to in just a minute. It was at this point we decided to treat the whole thing in um, wood treatment to protect it from the, from the elements. Uh, but we also used silicone to go in between every little gap to make sure that no water could get through and penetrate the wood. And then we covered it with a huge tarpaulin and battened it down to make sure it didn't blow away uh, in any crazy weather um, and ruin the structure. I really want this to last so we can get the most out of it. Now, climbing walls use T-nuts to make sure that all the fixings go into the, um, into the wall, all the holes go into the wall, but um, they're super expensive. So we decided just to drill straight into the wood and, and screw it in in place. Um, you could for, argue for and against this because it is very expensive to do one or the other, um, but T-nuts tend to ruin the wood over time anyway, the more you keep using them, they just bite further and further in. So if it's gonna go down eventually, I mean, it makes it harder a root set, but again, we're not the most experienced root setters ever, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. We're just gonna have a play and see what comes together. Holes. Now, I already had some holes that I used on my Ninja setup, as you'll see here. Sometimes you can buy them really cheaply. I know I got them from a climbing gym when they were getting rid of them. Uh, they're like a pound per hold. Um, but all the climbing gyms are closed because we did this during the pandemic, which was a shame. Um, my father-in-law has some serious skills when it comes to woodwork and carpentry, so he managed to make some holes for us, which are on the wall. You can see them in the video. It's what we did to, to begin with. Um, but my friend uh, very kindly 
uh, purchase some for us, which I very much appreciate. Thank you so much. Sounds just like at the uh, proper climbing gym. <laughs> Almost just sounds like we know what we're doing. Just doesn't look like it. What do you mean? <laughs> sounds like we know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of making problems, uh, I've got very little uh, experience when it comes to actual climbing. Uh, my friends are far better than me when it comes to that, uh, but none of us ever made uh, any routes before, so we had lots of uh, interesting talks there, putting climbs in, getting halfway up and figuring how to make uh, the next set up, uh, the next move up even. But a lot of them were very, very difficult. I think the first route that we put up, we leveled at about a V5, which is not a good place to start. So now we've set some nice, easy warm climbs, which we'll see very soon, followed by the harder ones. Yeah, it was like some crazy uh, video game level design. Uh, we had some fun, uh, but we did our research, so make sure you look into it first. Final word, safety. Before using any power tools, make sure you know what you're doing, or find a friend that does. Make sure you take the proper precautions. Also, Climbing can be dangerous. Uh, we've got some old mattresses and other things like that to make a really soft, cushiony landing. Uh, we've bought some outdoor climbing mats as well that were really helpful uh, to save us from any crash landings. Right, okay, let's go. Reach up. That's it. All right, foot on, left foot under. Nice. Nice.